of a, you know, silly example, but our lives, guys, are not different from this. Yeah. Like, this is very much a part, like, very much a picture of what our lives are like. And if we let this dirt settle, I mean, it really will all sink to the bottom, and the top will look clean. But this water is not clean, and this water is not pure. Just because the top is pure, and just because the top looks clean, there is still dirt in it. Therefore, this glass of water is dirty. It doesn't matter that the dirt is not, like when I poured it in and the dirt was everywhere. When the dirt was everywhere, it was not more dirty than it is right now. And when all of this separates, it is not more dirty. It is the exact, because the same amount of dirt is there regardless. Just because it looks different, just because it's in different places, this water is contaminated the exact same. Does that make sense? And I think sometimes in our lives, um, well, I'll split this here. If anyone gets thirsty, let me know. I think sometimes in our lives we can feel like if we're doing really good in one area, it's okay that all these other areas are like kind of gross and kind of messed up because we're doing really good over here. Like we had a really good Wednesday night. Like, gosh, like that's awesome. Well, I, you know, still like I'm going to lie to my parents when I get home and I'm still going to be kind of shady about this, you know, test or I'm still going to, I don't know, like you fill in the blank, like you know what your life is like. You cannot do really good in one area and be dirty in other areas and have purity and be pure. Because by definition, purity means that the entire thing, all-encompassing, is of, of that same nature. Um, purity, by definition, means the entirety of that thing is the same. So pure means, I looked it up uh, on the internet, uh, it means not mixed or adulterated with any other substance or material, it means without extraneous or unnecessary elements, free from any contamination. And I wonder if we looked at our lives today, if maybe we would notice that there are some unnecessary elements. There's some, maybe some unnecessary contamination that has become part of us. And just like this water, I think sometimes we feel like we can separate it and we can do the church thing and we can look really good or we can have, you know, really participate over here, but we still have this junk in our lives. Like, if you have stuff in your life, like, like there needs to be, like, purity that happens. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You have to be aware that, like, you work together as a whole. It's not just, like, God does not see your life segmented. He sees you, like, as a whole, and he wants your whole life to be pure, which is awesome that, it, that that's the case because it means it's possible for your whole life to be pure. And sometimes I think we feel almost like it's not possible for all of us to be, or it's like we try really hard at, we're doing good in these areas, but these ones won't ever get there. Like, it's possible to be clean and to be pure and to be righteous mm -hmm. as a whole, and that's what God um, desires for us. Point number two, purity requires action. Uh, like I mentioned before, purity very much, very much starts in the heart, but it is also very much what you do. Uh, right actions develop right mindsets if we strive for both in unity. There are things we have to be obedient to, though, even if we don't feel like it. We have to choose to be focused, not on the temporary, but on the goal. So that's where it's really important in your life to know why it is that you do the things that you do. Um, you know, for example, I, use, I think I used Holton and I as an example from our first, in like the first class. You know, my fiance, like I'm super excited to like marry him. I enjoy like spending time with him. But there are decisions that I have to make in my relationship now that I don't necessarily like want to make, but I have to make if I want health for my future. And if I want there to be something good, not just now, but someday. So, and sometimes it's just guys, little things. Like I'm not worried. I mean, I, I feel like we have good boundaries in our relationship. I'm not worried about something crazy happening because we've set up those boundaries. But even in little ways, even setting like curfews for ourselves, like, hey, it's kind of getting close to 12. Like, we should probably like go home and just see each other tomorrow. Now, would it be terribly wrong for us to like continue to hang out? I don't know. Maybe. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know that that would be the wisest decisions to make. Now, would that be like terrible? Maybe not. You know, but... Because I want health, not only for me, but also for him, I'm going to make a decision that goes mm -hmm. more toward maturity, like not just, hey, I feel like hanging out and it's not wrong, so I'm going to do it. Not just being like, hey, what can I kind of get away with and still be okay? Mm -hmm. But yeah. where do I want to be? What kind of life do I want? What kind of marriage do I want? And I want to make decisions now to influence where I want to be later. Does that make sense? So you have to, you have to operate having the goal in mind. So if you're going to dress modestly, why are you going to dress like that? Like, why are you choosing to not wear that? 
if you are going to wear something, like, like why? You know, if you're not going to say, you know, certain things, if you're not going to lie, if you're not going to cheat, why are you not going to do those things? Because if you're only doing it to follow a rule, chances are, like, like something's going to happen and it's just going to, like, shift and it's not... When you don't, like, feel it, you're not going to do it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? But if you know why you're doing something, it helps you continue to, like, move toward that because you see, like, what you're after, basically. Um, so this is the part where there's, like, quite a few scriptures. Um, because the Bible does talk a lot about... I mean, it is, it is like... It is a work that God does, but it is also a choice that you make. And so Philippians 2, 14 through 16 says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. Like he gives a, a command, like, choose not to grumble and argue. Like, naturally, I am, an, like, a grumbler. <laughs> like, naturally, I am a complainer. If things happen that I don't like, I just say something about it. But he says, like, make a choice not to do that so that you can become blameless and pure. Like, what kind of life do you want to live? Mm -hmm. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed or renewed, uh, or be transformed by the renewing or purifying of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So if I want to know the will of God, I have to be renewed in my mind, and I have to continue to purify my mind and purify myself so yeah. that I can understand what his will is. Yeah. yeah. What was Philippians again? Um, Philippians 2, 14 through 16. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Mm -hmm. Like, why, why would you do that? To take hold of the prize. Like, why else would you run if not to win the prize? And Paul says, like, run in such a way that you will win the prize. And I like that he says throw off things um, that hinder and sin that entangles. Because he's not just saying, hey, like, quit, like, swearing because that's, like, a sin. Or, like, quit sleeping around because that's a sin. Or quit lying to your parents because that's, I mean, he says throw off anything that hinders you and sin that entangles you. So there's, so some things maybe aren't sinful things, but they're not good for you. And they do not add purity to you. And he says, in light of, like, who you want to be, like, in light of the man of God that you want to be, you're going to have to forfeit some things to become that. Like, you can't carry it all. You won't get there. So, like, decide what you don't need to take, like, to be a woman of God. Like, take off things that are going to hinder you. Friendships, like, I know Andy did a, a really good job in his um, super session, and he talked about friends and how sometimes you have to let go of friends. Is it because, you know, friends are terrible and they will, like, you know, your friend's decisions pollute you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's true. Um, and just, I mean, you are not, like, if your friends make bad decisions and you don't make bad decisions, they're obviously the ones held accountable to that. But if that, like, slows you down, and if that is going to, like, add something unnecessary to your life, like, throw it off. And, like, focus on where you want to be and make decisions that, I mean, honestly, whether that's for God, like, if you don't want to live for God, then make decisions that don't honor him. Like, if you don't want to do it, like, don't do it. But if you want to do it, like, don't pretend like you do and then just like, try to drag the rest of the world with you. Like, I love it. I love it. In Joshua, it's like the end of Joshua. I picture him kind of at the end of his life. Like, he has won the world, basically, and he has, like, you know, fought the good fight, and he is like, hey, you know, I've, like, been around the block a time or two with God. Here's, like, here's the deal. He says to the nation of Israel, the ones who were, like, selected and chosen specifically to be God's people, he says, if Serving God does not seem desirable to you. Like, if you don't want to serve God, if you would rather, like, serve the God of the Amorites, like, across the sea, or serve, you know, the God of the Philistines, like, choose today, like, who you're going to serve. Like, mm -hmm. just choose. But for me and my house, like, we're going to choose the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so for you, like, if, you, if you're kind of on the bench, you're like, hey, I don't want to follow God, I'm not telling you, hey, don't. Like, hold, like, hang in there, you know, because he, like, has rescue for you. But just choose. Like, don't, don't, like, ride the fence with him. If you want him, like, he will take you there. You just have to, like, be willing. Mm -hmm. um, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, like, let the thoughts of your mind, the meditations of your mind, be the things that drive you. Um, and then finally, Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And I love that Paul says this. He's talking to Timothy, um, who's a really young pastor at the time. And it, I think it kind of just removes any room for excuse. 
Like whether you're in junior high or whether you're in high school or whether you're 50, he says like don't, I mean, there's not an age requirement. He says like don't let people look down on you because you're young, but set an example for even people who are older than you. Like set an example um, in purity. Um, you know, specifically, but I mean, you know, several things there. So again, it's equally important to know why it is that you do something as it is to actually do that thing. Um, just like you would purify water so that you can drink it. Like, I know why I didn't drink that water because it's nasty. You know, I know why I drink purified water because a lot of water has like iron in it, you know, and iron is like, or like fluoride and it's not like good for you. You know, and the same holds true for purity. We need to know why it is that we're pursuing it. Uh, number three, um, purity comes in the presence of God. And I like these last two points because I feel like they kind of, I mean, they are kind of the, the driving force and the why behind it. Um, but you have to know that purity comes in the presence of God. Um, I just said um, there's a purity and a wholeness that God desires for us that is only possible through continual time spent in his presence. We have access to him continually, and through him we are made pure. And as we are made pure, we begin to see him and desire to be like him. Um, there's a story in Zechariah that I just want to read briefly, um, which talks about Josiah, or sorry, Joshua, who was a prophet, uh, and he lived among like an unclean people. I mean, Israel at the time was not following God, and he he just he had like a lot of like shame and guilt. And so there's this vision um, that he has, and it says um, in Zechariah three one through six, it says, "Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord." So Joshua had been chosen as the high priest by God, um, which is a big deal. So he wasn't just a random Joe, like he had been like appointed. And I believe like you guys have been appointed to follow God, but there are things in your life that would hinder that. And like God wants to remove those things so that you can do that, not with a guilty conscience, but like with a clean like conscience and a, an understanding of like grace and forgiveness. So it says, then he showed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. Then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. And I love it because it's even like... It says, like, Joshua was dirty. Like, it didn't say, you know, like, he felt dirty, but he was, like, really, like, he was. Like, he was, he was chosen by God, but he was, like, dirty, and he needed to be, like, purified, and he needed to be, like, made right. And that happened, like, in God's presence. And I think for some of us, maybe it's not, like, current actions that we're doing, but maybe we do have, like, shame and guilt and things from the past, or maybe it's, maybe it is attitudes, maybe it is mindsets. Like, purity is not specific just to, like, sexuality. Like, purity goes in all areas of your life, into your thoughts, into your attitude, into your, you know, behavior, like it's all parts of it, and regardless of where that place in you is that's like wearing dirty clothes, like God desires to take those off and to give you like clean clothes, to show you like who he created you to be, what he has for you, like I just love it because like purity is possible, like we live in a really, really dirty world, guys, like we live in a world that doesn't like know God and that doesn't respect God and that I, I don't know. I just feel sometimes like I just need to like take a shower. Like I listen to the radio and I'm like, oh, it's just like wash my own brain because I just don't like I don't want that stuff inside of me. Right. But that's only because I've like learned the value of purity yeah. and like the freedom that it has. Like purity is not binding. Like it is not. It is not something that says like, well, I can't listen to like Bruno Mars because that's like you know talks about like having sex and that's like bad. I guess so. Like I guess don't listen to that. Like that like, purity is not binding. Like purity is freedom and purity is like. I mean, it is liberating, guys, and I only know that because I've, like, I've lived in, like, impurity, and I've lived in purity, and I will choose purity every single day, mm -hmm. and the cool thing is that, I mean, Allie touched on it a little bit last night, but, like, God just doesn't want to rescue you once, and he doesn't just purify you one time. It's not like, a, like, your salvation is instant, but the process of sanctification is a process of continual renewal and continued purity, like, over and over that God wants to give you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, like your clothes. Like when I get home, I'm gonna like put these clothes in the hamper, and then like this week I'll probably wash them because they're dirty because I wore them. Mm -hmm. Like your life is very similar. That as you go through life, like your life gets 
just like worn and you just need to like wash it. Like you just need right. to kind of go through the laundry yeah. and just kind of get like, is it, do I need to throw this shirt away because I wore it today? No. Right. No. Like I, I don't, I just need to wash it and then I'm, I'm like good to go again. Our lives are also like that where sometimes we just need God to like launder us a little bit, mm-hmm. just like run us through like the wash and then, and then we're like good, you know, and then we're good and then we like get dirty again and he runs us through and, and we're good, but it's time in his presence that that happens. Um, there are things that would make my clothes more dirty quicker. <laughs> like if I went and rolled in the mud or if I poured that like water that Bryce didn't drink, if I just like dumped that all over myself, like that would make me like more dirty, like fast. And so the cool thing about like these verses um, that I read in like just earlier is that there's like steps that we could take to help keep ourselves clean longer. Does that, does that make sense? So it doesn't mean we don't need washed again, but it means like maybe you don't have to, you know, I don't have to like wash this shirt like four times a day because I didn't like roll in the dirt four times a day. Does that make sense? Um, and it just helps, I don't know, because then regardless of whether you feel like you're perfect or not, like you still need laundered. Um, it talks about that in Hebrews, that like it's a continual like cleansing of like, we've already been like, like our sins have like been washed away because like the blood of Jesus, but then like he wants to like cleanse us continually, if that makes sense. Um, but these are, like, things that will help that so that we don't feel all that, like, guilt and shame. Like, we don't have to, like, put maybe stain remover on our clothes all the time. We just, like, give it a good wash, and it's, like, good to go. Um, in the presence of God and in light of his holiness, we become aware of our sin. But as we spend time with him, we desire to be like him. Um, why don't I write that? Yeah, okay. Um, in Psalm 51.10, um, David is speaking, and he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And I like that David wrote wrote this, um, you know, not when he, like, felt really good, but after he had committed adultery and murder and tried to, like, hide it and lied and cheated and stole. Um, David was, like, not clean <laughs> when he wrote this. And I like that he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God. He doesn't say, God, please, like, make it so that I have right actions, or, like, God, please let me, like, just do the right thing next time. Like, he knows, like, David, I think, understood something about the heart of God, that it was, like, your heart has to be transformed. Like, if his heart was right, like, he wouldn't have done those things, like, with Bathsheba. Like, if his heart was, like, right, he would not have, like, murdered, you know, like, her husband. Does that make sense? So his heart, like, needed to be purified. At the same time, like, he could have, like, lusted after her and not taken her. Right. And his heart still would have been unclean because it was, like, lust in his heart. And it was, like, the lust in his heart that, like, drove him to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so when David asked, like, create in me, he didn't say, like, create in me pure actions or, like, restore in me, like, a good appearance. But he said, create in me a clean heart because out of a clean heart come clean actions. Um, fourth, if you're taking notes, um, this is my final point, just why purity? And I think we've talked about, you know, like, what is purity? Um, you know, it is a mindset. It is also something that you do. You get purity in the presence of God. But why does it matter? And as I mentioned earlier, like, we live in a world where purity doesn't, like, matter to the world. Right. Like, you guys, you might not know it, but it is, like, a big deal that you guys are here. Like, it is a big deal. Wherever you're at in your relationship with God, like, the fact that you, like, want to know Jesus is a big deal because there are, like, millions of people who don't. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it just really is. It's a huge thing. And so it's important to know, um, like, why you want it. Um, so I just have a couple of subpoints. Um, things that are pure have a high value placed on them. If you think of gold or diamond, pure gold is worth more than like, you know, like a you know four karat gold or six karat gold, like twenty four. Is it fourteen karat gold? Is the biggest? It's like the pure. Is it fourteen karat gold? Or yeah. So like gold that is pure is worth more than gold that has other amenities in it. Um, same with diamond. Like diamond is one of the hardest. I think it's the hardest rock that we know of. Well, diamond, I didn't know this, but diamond is not pure on its own. Like, diamond has things in it that cause it to be... So if you're... Like, let's say you were to go buy a diamond ring. The more expensive the diamond, the more pure it is. Mm-hmm. Like, you can buy a diamond that has diamond in it, but it's not pure. And so you're going to pay, a, like, a cheaper price for it because it's not worth as much. But the diamond that has, you know, more of those impurities taken out and is more solid... That is what you're going to be paying, like, the big bucks for because that is what's worth more. That is what's more valuable. Um, Things that are pure are stronger. Steel is one of the strongest metals that we have, and steel itself is not an element. Um, Actually, steel is made from iron through a purification process where all of the impurities are stripped out of iron, and what you have left is steel. 
and steel is one of the strongest metals like, that we know of. Um, and purity, finally, is just essential for a relationship with God the way that he designed it to be. And I think that's the most important part is that like, if you want to live a relationship with God the way that he desires to have a relationship with you, like, purity is really important because without purity, we don't know God the way that he wants to be known by us because our sin by nature like, separates us from him, and he desires purity in our lives so that we can be with him. Um, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And I love this verse, and this is the one um, that I want to just like camp on for a minute, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. But I feel like it answers kind of all of those questions, like the, you know, what is purity? When are we pure? Why is it required? Why should we strive for it? It's kind of all in this verse. Blessed are the pure in, uh, the pure in heart, for they will see God. And so, I don't know if you guys are like me at all, but I love knowing the meanings behind something. So, a word in Hebrew maybe means, like, maybe you guys didn't know, in Hebrew there's three different, well, there's actually four different um, versions of the word love. Mm -hmm. In English, we just have love. So, like, I love ice cream. I love Fulton. I love my mom. I love, like, sleeping. All of those things have, like, different, I do not love food the way that I love Fulton, and I do not love Fulton the way that I love my mom. Like, that is weird, you know? (laughs) But in in English, we just have love. Right. Um, that makes sense. But there's four different kinds of love in, in the Hebrew. And so I love studying and really learning, hey, like, what were you actually trying to communicate? Like, how can I better understand? And so what I did is I just looked up um, the words in that verse. It's not very long. Just like a few. I just looked up, I think, five, six of the words. And if you're cool with it, I would just love to share with you yeah. maybe the deeper meaning of what God meant when he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Um, so first... You know, why Why should you be pure in heart? Because you will be blessed <laughs> and you will see God. Right. That is like the why. Um, and blessed means, this is all according to blueletterbible.org, um, um, but blessed in the, the Hebrew word there means happy. R is a state of being. So not like a, I was once pure, but I'm like, I, I are pure. That doesn't make sense. But like something that, that is like a continual state of being. So blessed are the pure in heart. So happy, a state of being. Pure means uh, clean, Pure physically, purified by fire. Clean, the use of which is not forbidden and imparts no uncleanness. Free from corrupt desire, from sin, from guilt. Free from every admixture of what is false. Pure is sincere and genuine. It is blameless, innocent, unstained with guilt of anything. So when you don't have guilt in your heart, like you're able to see God because your guilt by nature will hold you back from him. Do you ever wonder in worship why you don't want to engage with him? Like you feel bad, you're like, gosh, I, I want to like engage with you, but I feel like I shouldn't, like I should hold back because, like, I don't know, I did this or I feel shame or I feel guilt. Like by nature, your sin holds you back from God. And it is for that reason that you need to be with him because it is only in his presence that he's able to clean you from that. Right. Um, Okay, so that's what pure means. Heart, gosh, I love it. Um, it denotes or basically speaks to the center of all physical and spiritual life. All physical and spiritual life. It refers to the soul or mind as if it is the fountain or seat of the thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, or endeavors. Can anyone think of anything that didn't cover? No. That is all encompassing. So your heart... Your heart is like the center to who you are. Out of your heart comes passion. Out of your heart comes desires. Out of your heart comes your appetites, the things you like, the things you are affectionate about, the things you strive for. Endeavors are like things you go after, your pursuits in life. That all flows from the heart. So when you have a pure heart, you have pure desires. You have pure passions. You have pure um, like pursuits of things. When there's corruption in your heart, there's like a conflict, and your, your desires don't go the way they're supposed to. And then finally, to see just means to see with the mind, to perceive, to know, and to experience. Gosh, I love it. Like, to be able to perceive and to know God. So blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And it's true. Like, when you don't have those things holding you back, like, you are happy and you are blessed because you were created to be in the presence of your creator. Like, that is why you were made. And anything less than that and anything that holds you back from that needs to be gotten rid of so that you can stand before him like with boldness and confidence that he like loves you. His love for you doesn't change. Yeah. Like I love water. Like I would still drink this. Like my I do not you know, I do not hate this cup because it like is dirty water, but I am not going to be able to like enjoy like 
You know, I'm not going to like gain satisfaction from this water the same because it is not pure. It's not going to nourish me. It's going to be kind of gross. But I still love water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like God does not like dislike you or hate you or like, I mean, he's not repelled by you because of like your guilt and your sin. Like he wants to remove it so that he can be close to you because for your sake it's bad. Like God is a holy God, but Jesus like covered that for you. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. like and that's the cool thing too. I don't know what time it is. Maybe I'm going long, but it's 320. 320, cool. Um, this, guys, this is like revolutionary, okay? This is a little bit like sidestep, but like when, when Jesus like died on the cross for you, he covered your sin. Yeah. So when God looks at you, he no longer is repelled by your sin. Before Jesus, you could not be in the presence of God because God is a holy God and he can, like, like magnets that repel, like you can't, Sometimes, like, with the little ones I put in my fridge, I'm like, I can touch them, ha, I broke, like, the law of, you know, gravity, or, like, or not gravity, but, like, repellent, and that, you know, right. it's like, a, I mean, you cannot, like, you cannot be in the presence of God if you have sin, right? because he is, like, holy and blameless and pure and, like, cannot tolerate you, like, he can't, he cannot do it, that is why he sent Jesus, because Jesus is pure and Jesus is holy, <sighs> okay, and he... He's, like, the only one, guys. Like, he's the only one who's, like, able to, like, bridge that gap. Like, he's the only one. And because of, like, because of, like, his purity, like, he is able to cover you. And because of, like, his holiness, that is why my God can look at you. And that is why a relationship with Jesus is so important. Because now when God looks at you, like, he does not, like, see your sin. And he does not see your, like, shame as something that repels him. Like, he sees, like, the blood of his son. And he loves his son. Like, therefore, he, like, loves you. And he's, like, drawn to you. And that is, like, why he pursues you. Does that make sense? But when you have, like, guilt and shame in your life, God is not held back from you. Like, you are held back from God because you feel unworthy. And because you feel undeserving because of your sin. God is not, like... I don't know why. I just, like, keep, like, looking at you. But, like, Bryson, like, God is not, like, held back by your sin. If you have, like, a relationship with Jesus, like, he sees you and he, like, wants that relationship. But because of, like, guilt and sin in your life, you will choose to hold back from God because you, you don't feel worthy. Does that make sense? And that is why purity is important because purity allows that stuff to be removed so that you can, like, stand in the presence of God, like it says in Hebrews, with confidence and boldness before, like, God Almighty, and, like, know that you, like, are in right standing with him and that you have what you ask of him because you are his child and you love him and there's no separation. Like, there's, like, unity, and that is what he desires, and that is why purity is important. Like, no one explained that to me when I was, like, 12, and they were like, hey, don't wear, like, low-cut shirts because you're going to make boys stumble. Like, no one explained to me, like, why it was important. Like, that is why it's important. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why it's important to, like, respect your body because you know the value as, like, a woman that you have. Like, you understand because your value doesn't come from what attention you get. Like, your value comes from your Heavenly Father and the price that he paid for you. And that is why you dress modestly. And that is why you respect your body. And that is why you don't give boys, like, unnecessary attention. Not because it's wrong or because you're like a bad Christian, but because you are worth more than that and because they are worth more than that. Like, that is why you do it. Like, that is why you respect women. Not because of, you know, you can't get anything and, you know, so don't even, like, it is not about, like, that. It is about your heart and, like, your purity and your desire to be close to God. And when you are close to God, like, guys, he takes care of you. Yeah. Like, God takes care of you like no one, like, no one has ever taken care of me like God takes care of me. Like, his word says in... Like, Matthew 6, it says, like, if God cares about, it says, like, if a sparrow dies, like, guys, like, birds die all the time. I don't care. Like, I don't care about the birds. I mean, I do sometimes, but, like, I saved an ant at work the other day, but, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't care. I don't know about birds, okay? Like, God knows, like, a sparrow is the most, like, inexpensive, worthless bird there is. And that is what, I mean, you could buy a sparrow for a penny. Like, they are not worthful birds. Worthful. They're not, like, important birds. Does that make sense? Right. Mm-hmm. But the Bible uses them specifically and says, hey, I know when a sparrow, like, falls to the ground. Like, I know when a sparrow dies. Like, my, my eyes are not only on things that you would view as lofty. My eyes are on, like, things that I've created, right. and I love it equally. Mm-hmm. And how much more valuable are you, it says, than is a sparrow? Like, if you can buy a sparrow with, like, a penny, like, Jesus paid for your life with, like, his blood. Right. Like, God's son is worth way more than a penny. And if he would choose to not pay for you with a penny, but choose to sacrifice his own life for you, how much more is he going to take care of you? Is he going to do his best for you, take pride in you? Guys, like, God takes pride in you. 
Like, Miranda, like, God, like, looks at you, and he's not like, oh, yeah, she's just kind of like everyone else. Like, he singles you out, and he, like, knows you, and he, like, takes pride in who you are. Yeah. He's like, that's my girl. I'm like, I love her, and he wants you to, like, be close to him, not so that you can appease a leader or, you know, like, maybe make it through life without, like, I don't know, something like that happen. Like, no, like, he, like, wants a relationship with you because like, he, like, loves you and has, like, fought for you, and you are only able to be... Like, I am so convinced, guys, that you will only become who you were created to be through a relationship with God. If you can be as talented as ever. Like, if Katy Perry and, like, Justin Bieber, like, got on the God train, like, they would, I mean, Justin Bieber's, like, yeah. one of his, like, albums, I don't know, hit, like, a billion views on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. But that's just, I mean, that's, like, something that he, like, a kingdom he created for himself. Right. Like, with God, like, how much more does God want to elevate you when you are reflecting him? And I love it when it says, just again going back to um, to Philippians 2, it says, like, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. So, guys, like, there's a reason. Like, there's a reason like that he wants you to be pure because he wants people to know him and he wants you to know him and that he built his kingdom like through you. And it's just like really cool. It's just Matt. It's like so brilliant the way that he made it work together. And I don't know. I love it. And that's why I love purity. Um, there's just just like a couple verses I want to close with and then we can, I don't know, 230. Yeah, we're good. Um, this is in John 3, 1 through 6. It says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Like, you have to own it. Like, that is what we are. The reason that the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Mm-hmm. So, like, Abby, when you go to school, like, the world is not going to, like, support your choice to be pure. And it's not going to support your choice to follow God because it does not know God. And it's not going to support you in that. You're going to have to find support from him and from other people who are moving the same direction as you. It says, the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But when we know, or but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Like we want to be pure because like he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But we know that he when he appeared, or Sorry, but we know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. And no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. So it's like he is here to like take away our sin. If we are in him, we're not sinful. But if we continue to sin, like we, we don't actually like know him. I'm not, I'm not talking about little stuff like slipping up. You know, I'm not talking about like the little, like the stuff you have to launder yourself for. That's not um, what that's referring to. Um. But it's like when you know something is wrong and you like continue to choose to do it anyway, like, hey, I know like it's wrong to like do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Hey, I know I shouldn't like cheat, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Like those, like I'm gonna do it anyway sins. Mm-hmm. Those that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, so no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Because when you encounter God, like your life is not the same, and you like cannot, you cannot be the same. Mm-hmm. And so if your life isn't different, like pray that you like encounter him, because <laughs> it will be different. Um, and finally, just in Psalm 24, 3 through 4, it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Um, Father God, I just, God, I just, like, thank you. Just, like, so, so much for, like, who you are. God, I thank you for being pure. God, I thank you that you are the ultimate example of what we strive for. God, of, of who we want to be, um, God, but I thank you that in your humility, like, you knew that you were too much for us. God, and that we could not grasp you and we could not understand you, God. So you made an example of your um, just perfect love in sending your son Jesus to the earth, God, so that we could have a connection with you, God, that we understood. God, you are so selfless. Like, we, we just, like, don't get it sometimes. And you are so selfless, God. And you have gone to the ends of the earth to, like, show us the full measure and the full extent of your love and um, you did that through Jesus, and I am so, so thankful, because without him, I would not, like, I, I, I would not be here, and um, 
I just like praise you for that. God, I just want to thank you for the work that you do. God, that you are pure and that you help us to become pure. God, I thank you that it is possible to live a pure life um, in a world that is corrupt, God, and perishing. God, it is possible to be close to you and to know your heart. God, it's possible to be blessed and to have a pure heart and to see you. And Lord, I just ask for every single person in this room, God, regardless of how long they've known you, Lord, or what they've been through, it doesn't, I feel like we're kind of all on the same page um, just starting at the same ground today, saying that we desire purity, um, and we want to see you, and we want to know you, and we want to be transformed by you. So Holy Spirit, would you just guide us, um, just show us what we need to get rid of, God, what we need to take off, throw off that hinders, God, so that we can walk even closer with you, and um, for the things that we we can't throw off, God, for the guilt, or the shame, God, or the even unforgiveness we have toward ourselves that we can't shake, God, we ask for your divine power and presence just to wash over us and to clean us. God, to purify us of all unrighteousness because you are faithful to do that when we ask. Um, and the work you do is final and it is um, complete. God, and I thank you that you desire to um, draw close to us every day. And you just help us to know you more. In your name, amen. amen. amen.